Hey guys, look what we got today. 64 GTO, 389, three carbs, four gears. This is pretty cool. Uh, it's arrived to us, we've just pushed it in here because it's a dead duck. Uh, we got no spark, it's not, not firing the plugs, best as I could tell. Uh, but yeah, let's just have a quick look around this. This is, you know, it's a cool old car. Got some old school Krager wheels on it and uh, it's in pretty nice shape or it's certainly you know the top side looks pretty nice uh, check out the interior see let's go and have a little looky in here now i do believe it is the real deal gto it's got a lot of little signs that tells you it is someone's put aftermarket gauges in it which is mm, yeah uh, but it's got the correct steering wheel the wood grain the faux gr wood grain steering wheel it's got the engine turn dash, uh, you know, it's got the tack, um, and yeah, it's uh, the hearse shifter that it's meant to have. It's, um, you know, it, this is not a restoration, this is what I'd call an old survivor. It's been sat for quite a while, it hasn't run for quite a while, uh, it's got a musty smell to it, uh, you know, it's been in a, in a concrete floored barn. Uh, and you know for quite a while it was brought over from california originally it was it's in a california car but yeah it needs a little bit of love for sure it needs a bit of cleaning uh and obviously it needs to run uh, so that's uh that's kind of our mission is to get this thing started uh i suspect it's you know something's going on in the ignition coil or something like that but we'll, we'll dig into that but yeah it's uh it's it's like it's all there it's complete it's not coming apart at the seams like some of these barn finds are and I don't this is not a barn find the guy has owned it for quite a while he's just had it stored so yeah it's uh yeah, someone's upgraded it to disc brakes somewhere along the line and all right it's got the GTO hood scoops on it everything about it is GTO not a clone um, We'll read out the the, VIN, the cow tag and someone can kind of add, add to that, which I'm sure will happen in the comments. So yeah, uh, me and Steve are going to get it up on the rack. We'll have a peek underneath just to sort of see what's going on under there. And uh, then we'll dig into what's wrong with the old girl. All right, back in a second. Okay, she's in the air. It's... Uh, it's not kind of your stereotypical California rust-free car. It's got quite a bit of surface rust happening underneath. Now, I don't know how long it's been in California, whether it was close to the ocean or not, but I mean, come in and have a look. Um, you know, it's, it's all pretty original through here. There's a little bit of Bondo in the back quarters, very, very little bit. We've got a bit of rust through here. It's definitely a survivor car. You know, some of the rubber body mounts are, are failing. Uh, the exhaust is so what I, I know I get it but you know it's a lot of surface rust on the exhaust like this this old girl's not run for a while uh, you know someone someone spent some money on it suspension wise it's got the tubular lower arms here uh, it's all urethane bush it's got tubular upper arms uh, yeah it's got uh, air shocks which are deflated probably long ago uh, but yeah moving forward you know, we've got some surface rust on the chassis. And it is surface rust, you know, it's not... We've had them in here on the rack where the chassis are rotten. The chassis is not rotten, but it's got some surface rust that really does need to be addressed. Um, and the floor pans are solid. There's lots of, you know, there's a nice... It's not pretty, but it's a nice... I call it a nice kind of oily build-up, you know, from the leaks over the years. And that, that oil and dirt combination does make quite an effective rust proofing, believe it or not. Uh, but yeah, looking at some of the brake lines, we've got a bit of surface rust going on on the brake lines, which, you know, you really don't want. Same with the fuel line. That's going to cause issues before too much longer. Exactly when, it's hard to say, but, you know, it's going to happen. Uh, you know, it's all the correct four speed. Um, you know, someone's, someone's I'm guessing it's been out. These are the wrong bolts here holding the cross member in. And if I'm not mistaken, this should be on top of that rail. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think that should be on top. So 
Probably the transmission's been out at some time in its life. Uh, here's the brick disc brake upgrade. Um, that's, that's a relatively newer thing compared to the rest of the car. Um, I and mean, there's quite a bit of surface rust on the suspension components, which is kind of... I don't know, I suspect it's seen a little bit of salt, but it might be that salt here from the coast, you know? Um, same with the steering linkages, quite a bit of surface rust on these that you're not, we don't traditionally see. You know, beefed up, lot bigger uh, front anti-roll bar, sway bar. Um, oh, it's a cobwebs. But yeah, it's very, very kind of dry. It's been sat in a dry environment for quite some time, I would say. Uh, a lot of cobwebs, a lot of dirt. Um, but yeah, I mean, a great car to do a restoration on. Uh, a very good starting point rather than some rusty old rusted out thing that you've got to spend thousands on before you make it a solid car. It is a solid car that needs needs a little bit of love, uh, which is the way to do it. You know, it's quite a bit of oil leaks. Um, you know, the little cover plate, inspection plate over here is missing. Um, so yeah, someone's been in here. Not that surprising given it's 60 years old. Uh, anyway, that's kind of a tour underneath. Um, not as good as I'd hoped maybe, but a lot better than most we get through here. Um, so let's get it on the ground and try and get to the bottom of this no fire. All right, back in a second. Okay, this is, this is the plot twist. Uh, it's, gonna, it's one of those stories it's become. Uh, right, been busy on it. You know, the electronic module in the distributor, someone's upgraded it to an electronic distribu distributor and that's failed. We just, you know, literally no spark. So, pulled, you know, I've pulled a bunch of stuff up, pulled the plugs out, they were looking very old, pulled the wires off, they were looking old and terminals breaking. So the old girl's just been sat and not used quite a bit. You can tell by kind of looking at it. I mean, you've got the tri-power, um, someone's added the aluminum radiator. Um, and he's upgraded to the booster, or obviously at the same time as the putting discs on the front. Um, it's got the twin electric fans, you've got the relays here. So there's a little bit of stuff that's not authentic GDO, but uh, you know, the, the GDO's there, the, these cool um, cast aluminum valve covers, which are they're either polished or chromed, I'm not quite, probably polished. Uh, but the plot twist is, when I pull the distributor out, bottom of the gear there's like a little bit of milky looking oil and I'm like oh okay that bears a little bit a tiny bit you know um, I thought bears further investigation so I thought let's just have a look at the oil pulled the dipstick and it was it's not now but it, it was absolutely clean as the whistle there was nothing on it I'm like oh wow it's low on oil uh, so I thought best I drain the oil to see what's going on. Uh, it's, you know, try and inspect the oil and see if, if, if it just had a bit of condensation and moisture on the end of the distributor shaft or whether there's a bigger problem. Uh, so, drain the oil expecting to, you know, there's no oil showing on the dipstick, thinking there's only going to be a couple of quarts left in it. What I did was drained it out and this is what we got. About nine quarts of milkshake. I mean, zoom in there, Steve, it's like, that's, that's, that's not oil anymore, it's very thick, it's very gooey, and it's just nasty, and nine quarts came out of it, the reason it wasn't shown on the dipstick, was it's the wrong dipstick, um, I actually measured the length of it, the dipstick doesn't even reach the pan, so that's, that was giving me, a, like, a false reading on, on how much oil it had in it, and, so yeah, we've got like nine quarts in a five quart, five quart pan, and I thought, hmm, let's look at the radiator, see what that's looking like. Now there's no oil in the radiator, but it was down a full gallon, which is like four quarts. So four quarts out of the radiator into here, you know, you've got that nine quarts. So that's a very grim, you know, tells a very grim tale. Uh, clearly the head gasket's gone somewhere, or we've got a crack through to the water jacket, somewhere there, there's water getting into the into the oil um and quite a bit of it um to the point that like it's over full by you know three to four quarts so which is a lot and 
so this engine's been running with that mess in it so I'm gonna have to make a call to the customer uh, really realistically he's looking at an engine rebuild you could maybe pull the heads and you know see if it's got a blown head gasket put a set of head gaskets on it put it back together uh, personally I don't think that's a good idea um, you'd really want to investigate whether this has caused any damage whether there's any rust inside the engine um, due to the amount of water that's been inside the engine um, and the other thing even if none of that was happening and it just had a blown head gasket when you freshen the heads on an engine and leave the bottom end as it was with you know an unknown amount of miles on it uh, you know and probably you know it's probably been around the clock uh, you know you put nice fresh heads on them and it usually it has a habit of blowing the bottom end out you start using oil because there's just that little bit of extra compression and it just loads up the bottom end that's really tired anyway um, and the customer did say it smoked a little bit so yeah it's it's really we're looking at a complete engine rebuild and yeah so it came in for no spark and it's uh, yeah basically it's a complete engine rebuild uh, as a side effect of it's probably a good thing the ignition quit and it stopped it running because this it was this was gonna make a very messy sad ending if it had continued that way so yeah uh, cool old car I like it you know it, it needs it needs a bit of love and a bit of TLC and it's gonna be a great GDO but it does need a new engine so that's it guys that's it for today we're gonna dig in pluck this engine get it off to the engine builders and get it back um, so don't expect part two of this video anytime soon because the engine builders around here are like three months so uh, yeah that's it on this car for now um, watch the space in about three months time and hopefully we'll have an engine back for it in the meantime you guys have a good one and uh, we'll see you on the next one take care